a business student converts his residence into a brothel to develop one of the finest enterprises ever. We're talking about the enduring Tom Cruise film, Risky Business Today. Hey guys, welcome to our channel, Mystery Recaps. Today, we will recap a 1983 comedy romance movie named Risky Business. To know what happens later, keep on watching the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. In addition, I disclaimed that this video contains my own opinion and analysis. It doesn't take the place of the actual film. There are links in the following description to buy the movie. Let's start tackling it. The movie opens with Joel chatting to us and telling how he has the same dream every night in which he visits the neighbor's house rather than his own. And he always enters because no one ever answers the door. He hears the shower running in this vivid dream and goes to investigate, only to discover a really lovely girl. And she's taking a shower and you can probably guess what happens. But before any of that can happen, things take a rather strange turn and he finds himself entering a room used for college board examinations through a door. And now, since he is three hours late, he will never make it to college. Joel and his pals may be seen playing poker in the following scenario. He's telling his pals all the time about this made-up incident in which he gets a little activity with a nearby babysitter. His pals, however, constantly call his bluff and make fun of him. Later, as Joel prepares to depart, he speaks with his friend Miles, who will likely soon be departing for Harvard, and he's telling Joel to make his move. Joel informs him that his situation is totally apart from Miles. Joel receives some pretty odd advice from Miles, who claims that in order for opportunities to present themselves, he must say, what, and move to do so. Miles explains to Joel that because his parents are leaving, Joel has the home to himself for a few days. Miles advises Joel to once more just say with and find out what to do. It's the next day and we meet Joel's parents and they honestly appear like pretty controlling helicopter types. Joel is saying goodbye to his parents as they are set to depart on a sh His father has been advising him the entire time to obey the rules and not get into any mischief. You are aware of the situation. Joel is left alone and appears to be having a blast once they depart. He sips whiskey made by his father and even uses the occasion to dance while still in his undies. After a whole day of leaping about and enjoying himself, you've seen this particular scene. Joel will be physically attending in an industry lesson the following day. Barry, they also discuss how they haven't had time to finish their nighttime business endeavor. Joel's buddy Glenn shows up with a female and requests a room as Joel and Barry are working at Joel's house. Glenn's company, however, becomes so obtrusive while Joel and Barry are working that they are forced to leave. Joel destroys his father's porch despite his father's explicit instructions not to. They spend some time in the car driving about, making sure they enjoy themselves. The following day, after another enjoyable evening, Joel meets Miles and informs him that despite using his father's automobile and breaking a few rules, he is making good progress. But... Miles now believes that he needs to step it up and do something more enjoyable. He extracts the phone number of Jackie, a young woman who offers services at home. He makes a call to Jackie on your behalf, schedules a meeting for Joel, and promises to follow up with Joel later. Later, Joel keeps himself occupied by performing tasks around the home and preparing for his exams when Jackie shows over. When Joel learns that Jackie is a transgender guy, he completely loses it. Miles ignores his calls and does not come to him. After seeing them off, Joel pays Jackie back for the time she spent at his place and all of his efforts. But Jackie gives him Lorna's phone number before departing. Joel arranges a rendezvous with Lorna at his residence later that evening while posing as Ralph. You'd think that just one number would be terrible, but here we are. We're just going to start this chain of absurd guys. Then, after some time, Lorna appears and Joel actually gets the activity that he craved so hard, so I guess I was mistaken. Nothing major. Joel confesses after he discovers Lorna, still at his home in the morning, that Ralph is not his name. Joel is who it is too. He claims that he doesn't have the $300 that Lorna claims he owes her. He also has $50 in his possession. When he returns home and discovers Lorna has left, he sees that she has also taken the crystal mantelpiece adornment. When Joel and Miles eventually cross paths, Joel urges Miles to return the Faberge egg immediately. Also, Miles is invited to assist him. As they move towards a restaurant, they come see Lorna speaking with a man in the distance. 
Joel makes the decision not to act and leaves with Miles. But Lorna walks outside too and begs Joel for a favor. She replies that she needs a lift when Joel inquires what it is. Joel says he won't do it until he receives the egg in return. What do you think was it right of Joel to put this condition in between? Let us know in the comments section. When this is happening, the man Lorna was meeting storms out and yells at her to get out of Joel's car. The man is her boss, and Lorna tells Joel and Miles that they must take her away because he is threatening her with a pistol. Joel ultimately loses them in a maze of alleyways, while the man chases after them in his car, delaying his arrival at his residence. Even though Joel needs to go for school the next day, Lorna is determined about staying put at his plate. Joel exits his house to advise Glenn and Miles to continue to school without him, but he ultimately leaves, leaving Glenn and Miles behind. When he returns, he discovers that Gwen invited Vicky, another female, to his place. Joel enters and instructs Lorna and Vicky to fight it. They offer to contribute $50 of the earnings, but he declines and tells them to go. Just before they depart, Guido, Lorna's manager from the previous evening, reappears. When Lorna and Vicky inform Guido that they now work for Joel, Guido simply threatens Joel, supply before leaving. I'm eager to see how that plays out. But later that evening, Lorna and Joel have a chance discussion and choose to go out with Barry and Vicky for ice cream. Lorna advises that she gather her pals while she is outdoors. Until Joel's parents return, utilize his house to your advantage and prosper. She even says she wants to be his girlfriend for the upcoming few days. She responds that she was forced to since her stepfather continued making advances at her. Joel attempts to persuade her to open up about herself, but it appears like he is judging her and she claims that he is making it difficult for her to be friends with him. Joel and Lorna were conversing close to the pier and his father's car was parked on the dock with the brakes depressed. Joel's bad luck strikes once more as the automobile begins to move before ending up in Lake Michigan. And that's not the end of it. He is suspended for five days from school and is also removed from his business initiative. Informing Glenn that he needs to borrow his bike, Joel leaves the building to notify his companion. As everything seems to be coming apart, he rides his bike all the way to Lorna's place and gives her a big embrace. In an effort to save the entire scenario from its current predicament, Joel and Lorna eventually work together. They carry out their plan to build a business by introducing one other to each other's acquaintances. Joel has a large number of guests arriving at his home, including all of Lorna's pals. Most of his clients were men from his own school. Barry starts to concentrate on the money. As Joel takes on the marketing and sales duties, Lorna manages the entire production. He persuades the male students at his school to employ his services rather than wasting time elsewhere. Joel's home quickly transforms into nothing less than a brothel. The house fills up and everyone recognizes Joel's efforts as he manages everything at home despite his misfortune. Mr. Rutherford from Princeton's Board of Admissions walks up to do an interview that Joel's father had scheduled. Joel had a terrible interview and opts to enroll at the University of Illinois. Joel's father phones him at home in the midst of the chaos, and one of the lovely women takes up the call, of course, and it makes Joel's father suspicious who wonders whether Joel is having a party since he was specifically warned not to. Joel's mother then steps in, seizes the phone from her husband, and warns Joel to be cautious and take care of himself because they'll be returning in a day. After hanging up the phone, Lorna approaches Joel and makes the decision that they should make out on a train. So they pay off all the females, shut down the business, and head to the train. They must wait until the ideal time when there are less people there because there are many individuals on the train. When the train is completely empty, the encounter between Lorna and Joel is quite heated, similar to the last scenes of The Girl Next Door starring Emil Hirsch and Elisha Cuthbert. At this time, I am certain that Joel senses that he is feeling attracted to Elena. Pre-orders, Joel has already generated enough revenue from his firm in only one day to cover all of the harm done to his father's automobile. Joel returns the car to his residence only to discover that everything has been removed. Guido answers the phone when Joel calls Lorna and remarks that she has always had a love for trains. It is clear from Guido's admission that he stole all of your belongings. The worst thing is that your parents won't be here for another two hours. 
Vicky teams up with Guido to coerce Joel into purchasing everything back from him. Joel manages to acquire everything, even the crystal egg that began this catastrophe. As Joel's parents arrive, Joel and his pals are able to put everything back in its proper position. The crystal egg has a break, which Joel's mother observes. Joel's father informs them that he was accepted into Princeton because Mr. Rutherford was impressed with the interview later, as Joel is making up for the egg by mowing the lawn. So in the end, after a few bad decisions, Joel really got what he always wanted a little business experience, all after a hard day's work and admission to his dream university. But what do you all think? Let us know in the comments below. So guys, that's it for today. Check out this video on the screen to watch this amazing movie recap. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell icon to never miss any exciting movie recaps.